It is Thursday, March 21st. Happy March Madness, Menace Army. The only thing about basketball that I enjoy, except I can take that back. I like women's basketball. I do enjoy watching women's basketball from time to time. And I love March Madness. Uh, college basketball, regular season, I, it's, I, I'll watch it every now and then. Um, but it's the highest level of basketball that I can enjoy. Because once they graduate and go to the next level, it, they turn into pussies, all of them. But I'm here for it. The, it, it really, you know why I am, Chris? Why? Because, like, I love Cinderella stories. Everyone does. Mm -hmm. But it's like you'll see teams that just, like, it's five seniors that are just well coached, give great effort. They fucking like fundamentally sound. They play together and they'll take down fucking Kentucky in the first round. And you're like, what? Like those dudes in blue and white are about to make millions. You all are going to go sell fucking car insurance. Like how did they beat them? It's just, it's, it's beautiful. It's Honestly, a beautiful thing. I wonder that like if, if the transfer portal and all the one and dones will kind of help the schools that have really great culture that guys don't transfer from from that like keep all five guys there for three or four years yeah it absolutely will and i just love it and, and i also you know i filled out a bracket but we, we did a bracket uh, a menace bracket challenge last year we didn't do it this year but i filled one out don't care i love hearing people bitch oh my fucking brackets ruined dude could duke lost i had him in, i had him as my champion yeah <laughs> it's just it's beautiful i only fill out brackets when ohio state's in it so that's fair akron's in it though i got them winning it all didn't fill it out <laughs> But just in your mind, you have Akron winning it all? Yeah, sitting on the show. Just like I said, like the purple Gatorade shit. And yeah. people was like, no way. Yeah. It was purple. Well, I will tell you, Chris, we, we Justine and I recorded a Mind of the Menace last night. It was really, it was, it was, I think, a solid episode. So if you're a general tier on Patreon, you get that. We're going to try to get back to doing that. At, I'll, I'll say every other week. We are going to record one next week with Ainsley, though. So so we're going to try to, the, the goal is every week, but I'm promising you every other week. You get to know Ainsley. That's a great yeah, right? And, and it's I want to see how she is on a mic. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Maybe her and Justine can start a show. So we'll see. But it's going to be fun either way. Um, so if you're on Patreon and you missed it, go check it out. Um, and then Bourbon and Ball the night before. Damn, it's off season. We're just pumping out content. Are we going to compete with Call Her Daddy? Uh, that, that, that is, Justine and I have talked about for, that for three years. And I, I would love to. I would love to start a show like Call Her Daddy here in Columbus. I think it could be outstanding. Mm -hmm. She's got to be the right people, right? Call it's her got... Brutus. <laughs> Call her. No, I would tell you, you know, the, you know the name that Justine and, and Ainsley came up with for a show like that? Hmm. Fifty Shades of Menace. Okay. I, I like get that behind one. that. I like that one. But uh, we actually have other. Did you have a good day, bro? Right. A great day. Good. A great day. Um, Justine's parents came back from Florida. So I opened up a good bottle of bourbon because her, her stepdad, Tom, is a big bourbon guy. Big bourbon connoisseur. Big bourbon guy. So we had a little Eagle Rare, a little Weller Antique, and just hung out with family. My dad's still in town. He's, he's I guess, he's doing better. Good. Um, so just hung out. It was, it was a good day. But we got two days left to finish out this week. If you are hitting us up about the merch store, we just talked to him. It's supposed to be fixed, but the actual link that still works is it will be in the bio. And we tweeted it out on Twitter. So if you want to check out the rebrand merch, it's there. You just, the fucking link broke or something. I don't know. But it'll be fixed in the next 48 hours. We are DNSAAA. DNSAAA. That was, what the fuck that means. I don't know. But let's get to the show. Lukey, let them know what time it is, Bubba. Let's get to the show. Let's get to the show. Uh, this is some stadium news. Obviously, like when baseball season gets here, I like going to baseball games. It's maybe my favorite sporting event because it's like, the least chaotic oh yeah it's, if, it's, if that makes sense it's like taking your kid to the park you know right it's like it's chill like every now and then you see some exciting happen I, I love the sport of baseball i really do my my son's played it forever my daughter plays softball i played baseball as a kid and and up until i think my my sophomore year junior year i stopped playing and like it's it's a game you could just like kind of watch while you chat football i get fucking locked in bro oh, yeah. like i oh, can't yeah. i cannot talk, talk exactly yeah um but here we go there is oh damn i, I cropped out what team it is they're doing a all-you-can-eat tickets now. Texas Rangers. There it is. Texas Rangers doing all-you-can-eat tickets. $52, and you get through seven innings. You can get four items per trip up to the concession stand. Huh. Well, with, with concession prices. That feels like a steal. Yeah, you get the ticket. And that's the ticket, too. That's not tacked on top. No, that's just the ticket. Oh, I'm in. Talk, if you get one of those for you, you could take the whole family and everybody can eat for $52. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I'm going to tell you right now, I've, I've taken my kids to sporting events, amusement parks. If I paid $52 a ticket for my whole family, that's six people, 300 bucks, steal. Yeah. A steal. 
One trip to a concession stand at a base. We went to a minor league baseball game in Florida on spring break last year. One trip to the concession stand is like 120 bucks, 130 bucks. <laughs> like, I just got three hot dogs and nachos and four four waters. Like, mm-hmm. what are we talking about? You yeah, know I'm, me, in. I'm, I'm in. I'm in. I'm Glizzy Gladiator. I'm going up every inning. Let me what? get three hot dogs and a water. <laughs> <laughs> and come that fourth inning, it's, we don't even need the water no more. Just give no. me four hot dogs. I'm getting all those non-alcoholic beverages, pouring a little something in them that I brought. <laughs> Sneaking the liquor. Absolutely. <laughs> We're so ha- we're having a day. Yeah, great day. Um, I'm, I've been reading up on this Otani thing. I, I honestly spent way too much of the morning reading up on Otani. For those who don't know, it sounds like his <laughs> interpreter was millions in debt doing some illegal gambling and asked Otani to cover it. And Otani, I guess, did cover it. But now Otani's people are saying they didn't cover it and he stole the money. Wild baseball size. has a little gambling disaster, borderline disaster on their hands with a guy who was contending for face of the league. Yeah, I mean, and who knows the reality? This is his interpreter, um, longtime friend. Maybe he was stealing from him. Maybe he wasn't. No, Tani's backtracking because he doesn't want to be associated with it and saying he stole from him. Wild to me that California, it's not wild actually because California is the most fucked up state in the entire country, but that they don't have gambling legalized yet. Like, just wild to me. But, uh, I feel bad. For, I mean, I feel bad for both of them. Who the fuck loses four point five million dollars gambling? Yeah, that's a lot of fucking money. Definitely okay. wasn't following Mensa. No, definitely wasn't following Mensa or any logic at all. Like I'm, I, I gamble. I think I'm about even right now since it was legalized in Ohio. I can't. If I lost, if I was down like ten grand, I'm. I quit. I, I quit. Yeah. Like, like I'm out. Like I'm not good at this. I'm gonna continue to lose money. I am out skis. But also, like, the book that he was, you know, gambling with has been under investigation for a while, and he still managed to go $4.5 million before anybody was like, wait, that's Otani's. He's betting on. <laughs> well, at some point, you have to be like, how the fuck does this guy have all this money? <laughs> yeah. Like, like, where's he getting it like from? The, the taxes ain't adding up. Right. This little Asian guy. <laughs> like the dude from Hangover <laughs> jumping out of the fucking trunk. $4.5 million. You think Otani gets in trouble for this? Uh, no. I, don't. I mean, even if he is in the wrong, they cannot afford him for him to be in the wrong. No. It's like no. Michael Jordan. Like, Michael Jordan was absolutely gambling on way too much. Oh, yeah. They said, go play baseball for two years. Yeah. That was just suspension. Suspension, right. Yeah, you know what? Go go try out pro baseball for a couple of years and then come back. Because you cannot have the face of your league no. entrenched in this. No. You can't have it. Um, We got other, other people out there being silly. The Arizona Cardinals executive. Terry McDonald has been accused of choking his neighbor. They had a neighborly dispute. What's going on this this week, bro? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, one, if you're in that type of role, really anybody, you shouldn't choke your neighbor. I mean, it's just a general rule of also, life. Also, your neighbor's rich as fuck. But just, also, yeah, I mean, it's, good, it's in a nice neighborhood. But also, you know what this country's lost? The fuck around and find out. I bet his neighbor was talking crazy. And 15, 20 years ago, you talk, you talk crazy to the wrong person, you're going to get your ass beat. Nowadays, like, I'm going to call a lawyer. I'm going to sue you. Bunch of fucking bitches. Like, I need to know why he choked him. What did the guy say? You know what? If I'm the judge, I need to know the, the whole conversation beforehand. Because if he says some shit about his daughter or wife, I'm going to be like, <laughs> dismissed. Case dismissed. <laughs> like, you said some foul shit and he fucking put his hands on you. Yeah, it started with a chest bump. And you know what the rule of thumb is? As soon as that chest bump happens, anything's game, man. Yeah, contact has been made. Like, because we're, we're, we're talking face-to-face. Obviously, things are being said because it's, it's not, at that point, a quarter conversation. We chest bump. You know what? <clears throat> I'm here for Fuck it. Fuck it. You just bumped me. Mm-hmm. Now I can fight. And he's a football exec? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? I'm here for it. I'm glad he choked his neighbor. Fuck that neighbor. Bring, bring back the fuck around and find out. Rule, we need huh? to. That's fair. That's fair. Um, this this one's for you. So back when draft Twitter hit its peak, a group of like draft analysts got together and created this website, this media company called the Draft Network. Massive success. Did a great job. They hired a lot of the uh, the former NFL.com people. It did a really good job. I guess they had a little bit too much fun because... Oh, there's no such thing, first of all. Okay. Well... There was a Brazilian tech firm that got involved. There was $1 million in unpaid dues and something called the Porn House for the NFL Draft Network as they've kind of slowly started to fade away from the scene. Well, I got to be honest, Chris. When we are a multi-million dollar company, I know you're going to come to me like, just hear me out. (laughs) Just hear me out. We could open a studio. I'm like, oh, a new studio? No, 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 not that type of studio. There's some hot girls that were really slutty in Columbus. (laughs) 
We'll just yeah. look up OnlyFans girls and give them a place to do their content. <laughs> I know you're going to come to me about your artwork. And if I did come to you about an art project, which I'm not ruling out right now, I would say let's partner on a separate LLC. Yes. And have it separate from our draft evals. That's so true. I don't have guys going to a porn house and then going to the fucking combine. <laughs> but, right. But that sounds like a hell of a weekend. Just saying, like, I don't I don't care that I don't you know what? You're right. That does sound like a hell of a weekend. But just, it's just, over. Just sir. so you know, the answer will be no. The answer will be no. Yes. You wouldn't do well, I never say never say never. I was gonna say, bro, some of these chicks pulling some crazy lucrative deals, bro. Off the, eh, I off, like money off the OF. So if we can open up an OF house, hey, that's not that's a hell of an idea. Yeah, just say you definitely you definitely would. What's more likely is I wouldn't bring that to you. Yeah, will, you pa would, will Pat be in charge of sanitizing the the props? <laughs> that's insane. I'm just asking. I'm trying to. I'm going through this business plan in my mind. If I did bring it to you, it would be so well put together. I believe you would say yes. I would, it would be, it's your calling. Like, it's as, truly your calling. As someone who studied the industry, I would take a lot of the practices from the, the fan van <laughs> and bring that to this. But wild story. No. I, I love wild stories in sports media. Def they opened a porn house. <laughs> what the fuck? For no reason. <laughs> For no reason. What? You just, you just wanted to watch porn stars have sex? Yeah, they you can do that on the, on the hub. Like they weren't filming anything there. They were just going. It was like a leisurely house. Like, you know how we go to the one golf house during the... <laughs> At the memorial? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, what are you doing after you watch Caleb Williams Pro I mean, Day? I could get down with that. Like, that'd be a, cool, a fun outing. Like, Justine and I go have a couple drinks and there's just people fucking everywhere. Yeah. It's kind of like a swingers club. Swingers. We Except love... those are amateurs. These are professionals. Yeah. Um... <laughs> this was great. Colin Coward said he's talked to some people around the league, and he said that uh, the Panthers could not trade Bryce Young for a toasted bagel. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, Justin Fields got traded for a sixth-round pick. Sixth-round picks have like a 10% chance of making the roster. Mm -hmm. So the Bears basically just gave him away because I we'll look, we'll look back on it. I bet a lot of money whoever they draft with that pick gets cut. So they gave him away for nothing, right? Yeah. Just to get rid of him and his salary. Bryce Young was worse than Justin Fields. So, like, who who wants him? Yeah, far far worse. And yeah. it, it's it's really confusing because I, I honestly think the Bears got absolutely fleeced. Like, the more I read into it, the more it's like, damn, they definitely could have gotten a better offer than that. Well, and here's the other thing. He got traded to be a backup. I didn't think that would happen. I thought someone without a quarterback would draft him and say, yeah, he's better than what we got. Right. He, he got drafted as a backup. And you can't tell me. Someone like the Dolphins, and I had a conversation with our guy Caleb about it today. The Dolphins said, fuck it. Fifth-round picks don't really make the team either. Here's a fifth-round pick for mm -hmm. Justin Fields because Tua kind of is injury-prone. Give us a solid backup. Like, there's so many teams in the league that could have given up a little bit more, like a, a sixth and a seventh or a fifth and a seventh. But, but again, it, it feels like the Bears – not doing their due diligence, which yeah. has always been the fucking case. It's the Bears are going to bear. And people are going to say, oh, well, that just means nobody else thinks Justin Fields is any good. Dog. Trey Lance got traded for a fourth. Right. Trey Lance. No business being in the NFL anymore. Well, really ever. And I thought the fourth was a good. It's like, okay, you get a quality backup. Yeah, it's a decent backup yeah. for a fourth round pick. Justin Fields is marketably better. Then Trey Lance, and they only got a six-round pick for him. And also, yeah, what what six-round pick is going to be a better backup quarterback than Justin Fields? No, no, God. I mean, everyone will point to Tom Brady, but it's like they, none of them. Yeah, and Tom none Brady got drafted before I was born. And I would still so, contend not that, that. that if Justin Fields was in San Francisco, he would have as much or more success than Brock Purdy. That's 100% fair. I mean, I, I think you'd have the same level of success I, in Dallas as Dak Prescott. I think you'd have the same level of success as Daniel Jones in New York, <laughs> which is not no success, but anybody could do that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, so I, I, I don't know. It just, it's, it's insane. And damn, if if you are, I mean, Bryce Young's gonna inevitably go through the same thing Justin went through. Oh yeah, they're a train wreck over there. Yeah, it's not happening. He's it's drafted just, by the wrong team. That's what it is. Jonathan Mingo and Adam Thielen, who's seventy four years old, <laughs> it's fucking over. In a year from now, he's gonna get traded for a fifth round pick. Yeah, I'm curious if the chat agrees with me. Just give me a yes or no. Would Justin Fields have the same level of success at a minimum as Brock Purdy in San Francisco? Yes or no? Yeah, some of the chat's saying he'd be better. I Brock think he'd Purdy. be better. Me too. Um, This was crazy, bro. C at CBS made a lot of people mad. 
they uh, they went ahead and compared the first 50 career starts of <laughs> Daniel Jones and Trevor Lawrence. And we got it on screen for you. This is a bad deal. Bad deal. But Trevor Lawrence is like, oh, I, I guess they, they think he's going to be something that he's not been yet. Mm -hmm. I mean, win-loss record, the same. Daniel Jones tied a game and Trevor won it. Passer rating, Daniel Jones gets the nod. Passing plus rushing yards, Trevor has him by like 200 and some yards. Passing TDs to interceptions, 57 to 33. Daniel Jones is better. Yards per attempt tied. Completion percentage, pretty much the same. Yeah, 0.4. Yeah, I mean, the 0.3 differential. Like, they're the same guy. And Daniel Jones, everyone is regarding him as ass. And Trevor Lawrence, I've heard people talk about, oh, man, he just is a couple pieces away, and he, he could be a top 10 quarterback in the league. And they didn't put Justin Fields' stats up there, but his are better, too. It's like, I don't know what people watch and look at and study and how they justify the shit they say. Seeing, I, and again, I, I'm not really, I don't spend too much time on NFL Twitter. I spend a lot of time on, like, Giants Twitter, Steelers Twitter, Browns Twitter. Like, those are the Twitters Steelers, that I'm around. Steelers Twitter. Get the um, fuck out of here. I've never seen the Jags fan base more angry, bro. They are pissed. Oh, I bet. They are so mad at CBS. People are suggesting that the Jags don't play on CBS anymore. It's like, <laughs> that's not how that works. No, it's not. <laughs> also, that's a, that's got to be the kiss of death. Whenever someone puts your stats up next to Daniel Jones, it's over. Sell all the stock. Yeah, it's over. I mean, I, listen, I think, I think Trevor has a lot of tools, but he hasn't been very good. He really hasn't. Does he have more tools than Daniel? Maybe. I mean, Daniel's one of four quarterbacks to clock 19 miles per hour with the ball in his hands in a game. He's got the rushing ability. They're both the same size. I, I really just think Daniel Jones looks like Jim Carrey. And <laughs> that's the bigger issue here. Yeah, like fucking Trevor Lawrence looks like a horse with hair. But he's got great hair. He does have great hair. And they say hair just it's makes you more. It's when he trots out on the field holding his helmet and it's just flowing everywhere. People yeah. are like, oh, that guy's got to be pretty good. Yeah. And my, my big theory holds true. Quarterback face does matter. Ugly quarterbacks don't pan out in the NFL as often as handsome quarterbacks. Just so you know. I mean, there's been there's been some ugly ones out there. There has. But the quarterback face theory, you know, the believer that after an interception, the more handsome quarterback will stop the bleeding, while the less handsome one will continue bleeding. Okay, that's a wild take. Just saying, just saying think about it, bro. When Kirk Cousins starts to play bad, oh, compounds it really, really quickly. Just... Her cousin's is ugly, dude. With that nose, he could smell the whole world. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's not a great looking dude. I mean, I didn't think we we're gonna have this conversation today, but what what quarterbacks are ugly in the NFL? Like, obviously, like objectively, like Cam Newton is more handsome than Kirk Cousins. That's fair, right? Like, this is a wild conversation right now. It, it Who's the ugliest quarterback in the NFL? That's a question for the chat. I think it's Trevor. I think it's Daniel. No, I just hate Daniel. I know you hate Daniel, but you can have a, a conversation and take your your hate for Daniel Jones out of it. Guys, Eli's excuse from quarterback face because Eli didn't know what was going on. Because he has on. Down syndrome. Yeah, okay. Don't make fun of Eli for having Down syndrome. They said Sam Hartman's beautiful. Good looking guy. Anyway, we have other football topics to get into, I <laughs> yeah, swear. Let's move on. Um, Chase Young, background on his deal. So I guess he, he's got the the neck ish, issue. Yeah. And no team would clear him for a physical except for the Saints. Yeah. The Saints not only cleared him, but gave him 13 million guaranteed, which is massive for them. And he just had the next he'll have the next surgery today, I believe. Yeah. Well, it's five million guaranteed. It's not thir it's 13 million oh, total. 13 million total, five. Five guaranteed. guaranteed. And, and I like what they did. They basically said, All right, we're gonna we're gonna sign you. We think you have a chance to still be a really good player. But you got to get this neck issue fixed. So he had he's having surgery what tomorrow, mm -hmm. and they basically said we're going to give you five million guaranteed, eight million in per game rosters. Yeah, like so if, all you do is make the rosters. Yeah, so it's not like the incentive guarantee. Yeah, it's not incentives. It's just like if you're actually healthy and this, ne this neck surgery works and you can play football, you'll make thirteen million dollars. If you can't, at least you walk away with five because no one else is going to offer you shit. Yeah. Feel bad for Chase. I mean, it sucks. It's part of football. Hopefully this surgery works, he gets healthy, and he can continue playing football and making money. But here's a quick note on the Saints. If you're an injured player, they will clear you no matter what. They don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, remember Drew Brees? They, uh, nobody would clear him. Drew Brees was supposed to join Nick Saban in Miami. And honestly, that move shifted all of football yeah. by him not getting cleared. The Saints said, we'll clear you. No problem. You're good. We'll pay you. Hey, Same deal here. It worked out off. once. I mean, paid off. Drew Brees is living healthy, mm -hmm. won a Super Bowl, like had a nice long career. 
Yeah, he. I mean, he may not have been able to throw the ball forty yards, but he was good enough between ten and. All right, I watched Peyton Manning win a Super Bowl with Denver, and now he had a fucking noodle arm by that point. He had the worst neck oh injury ever, bro. Ever. They said he couldn't even turn. Bro, he had to like turn shoulders everywhere yeah. he went. Still won a Super Bowl. Yeah, my neck and my back. Well, you know, he got benched in the middle of that <laughs> my year. Neck, my back. Oh, never mind. Not this show going off the rails. <laughs> Here we go. It's time for a commercial break, yeah, right? It is. I knew it. it we'll is. be right back after this. What's up, Menace Army? Got to tell you about it. I've told you about it a hundred times. It's all about Miracle Made Sheets. Did you know your the, the temperature at night can have one of the greatest impacts on your sleep quality? If you wake up too hot or too cold, I highly recommend you check out Miracle Made's bed sheets. Inspired by NASA, Miracle Made uses silver infused fabrics and makes temperature regulating bedding so you can sleep at the perfect temperature all night. It's self cooling for better quality sleep, self cleaning. These sheets are infused with silver that prevents up to 99.7% of bacterial growth. Comfort and quality, they're the best, I always say, the best sheets I've ever owned. Designed for your skin. Try miracle.com slash menace. Try miracle.com slash menace and you get 20% off. You, it's already, if you say, if you order today, you already can save over 40%. And if you use our promo code menace at checkout, you'll get three free towels and an extra 20% off. The best sheets you've ever owned for way cheaper than they should be. Go check them out. No lies detected. No, they are legit. Shout out, Brian, new YouTube menace member. Love it. Go. So we got we got our, our YouTube membership up and running. We're still building it out. But right now, one, it's a flex. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm a real member of the Army. And two, you get a custom emojis you get, you that you can drop in the chat. You get um, an av avatar, Avi, where as you go, it'll, it'll start upgrading and updating. And then you can really flex. Like, man, I've been a member for 24 months. Get your bitch ass out of here. <laughs> Facts. And it's only $4.99. So go join. But you have to do it on a PC. To my knowledge right now, go to a computer, go to our, our YouTube page. You're already subscribed. It'll say join. Click join and become a real official member of the Menace Army. Speed, thanks for the two. Got the membership thing figured out. Thanks. Menace, mem Menace Speed. Love it. Elks, thanks for the five. That's uh, that's member Elks. Greg Scruggs re resigned as Michigan's D-line coach. He blew a one a point one six. <laughs> Buddy was sauced. <laughs> Whoa, he blew a 0.16, bro. How much alcohol is that? A lot. I don't know. I mean, you know, it depends on body size and not, and how long he was drinking, but that's a lot of alcohol. Like, the, like that's that's really drunk. What's the legal limit? Probably like 0.08. Damn. Like he's probably double the limit. Oh my goodness. He that's was... like can't even see the lines drunk. Oh my. Well, I mean, he resigned. So well, good luck in high school football. <laughs> Fucking idiot. Uh, would you have him on this show? Hey, come on. <laughs> come be a member, Scruggs. DJ, thanks for the five. Damn, and it was two weeks on the job. Never mind the fact that his dumb ass blew. The fuck don't ever blow, ever. Because if you're going to blow, they're already charging you with it. It's already over. Unless, I mean, I, I guess you blow if you've literally not had a single drink the entire night. But it doesn't matter if you blow under the legal limit. They'll say, oh, well... That was 45 minutes after we pulled him over. So he's probably like, it's not going to get you off of anything. Once you get pulled over for a DUI, here's a little, little tidbit that I learned, learned from a lawyer. When you get pulled over for a DUI, when they ask you to step out of the car to do a field sobriety test, or they try to get you to do to blow, they're just trying to gather evidence. You're getting charged. They're just trying to strengthen their case against you. If they ask you to do a field sobriety test, you say, sir, am I under arrest? Cause if not, I, I'm refusing the field sobriety test. And they'll arrest you. But then they got nothing. They got no proof. And you, at least you can battle it out in court. But the moral story is, don't drink and drive. Get a fucking Uber, you moron. Yeah. I'm, def I'm definitely glad you, you brought it back to that. Well, I'm just Uber, right. trying to help you out if you really fuck Hopefully. up and you're in that situation. Hopefully you didn't hurt anybody, which you could do. So don't do it. But. But also, like, you, and you just got the new job? Like, damn. Yeah, it's fucked up. <laughs> DJ, thanks for the five. You got to appreciate good banana, cucumber, and apple pie. Unicorns are cool, too. Different than pineapple fruit is a great way to start your day. You yeah, know. we we went down a a, 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 poly, a poly conversation in the general's chat today that I was not expecting. I was just I was just joking around with Emily. You know Emily. Yeah. Longtime menace general. Love Emily. She she says something about a unic put a unicorn emoji. I said, Emily, you got to be careful with that unicorn emoji. And yeah. they just started going. I said, do you know what the cucumber emoji or the, the, the 
what the fuck's it called? The eggplant. eggplant emoji. I'm like, what did I start? Then I start educating. Well, unicorn is this. Pineapple is this. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. It's real degenerates in there. Real degeneracy. Percy, thanks for the five. What's up, guys? I'm trying to start my own YouTube channel talking sports. Do you guys have any, have any advice? Uh, sports is my life. Um, do it Monday through Friday every day. Pick a time and always go live at that time. And then just promote the shit out of it. Make little, make like make little clips. Put them on Twitter. Put them everywhere. TikTok's a great way to kind of go viral for no reason. I remember we started doing TikTok, and we had one of our first or second ones was. I, I, and granted, it was a story about like Tim Tebow or something, but it was I'm a about, Terrell Pryor. Oh, Terrell Pryor, and mm -hmm. it just started going crazy, like tens of thousands of views. So, yep. just go, man, and don't look back. And if you're chasing money, you ain't, it ain't gonna be there at first. Mm -mm. Nope. So you got to just grind. That's real. Philly, thanks for the two. Marv versus Travis Hunter, jump ball for your life. Who you got? Marv. That one's pretty easy. You got to pick a bigger corner than that. I don't know, Travis Hunter. I, uh. Bro, I, I watched that Stanford wide receiver go crazy on just jump ball after jump ball against, against him. Yeah. And Marv is just too good. Bull skill guy. I wonder about Trav long term. Is he going to be a DB or wide receiver? I think he's going to be a corner. Okay. Like, he's a... He's a good receiver, but in the NFL, kind of dime a dozen. But yeah. with, his, with his length and his his man coverage ability, how tall is he? Um, I don't know. I think he six, looks about six one. Yeah, I think he's he's over six foot. But but I'm talking to the length. Like he's yeah, got he's long, so, he's so long ass big. arms. Yeah, and I do feel like near the back half of the year, he kind of struggled. He's six one one eighty five. He struggled playing corner. I think his legs were blown out. Yes, of course. I fucking said it before he ever played a game. Yeah, he's gonna play both ways. That many snaps. By midseason, his legs are cooked. Yeah. Ask Philly. Philly never came off the field just at receiver. And by the end of the year, his legs were cooked. Yeah, like watching him, what was it, TCU? He played like 40 on offense, 40 on defense. Mm -hmm. That's insane in the heat. And when they started going up tempo, you saw it. It was like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He is alone out there. I mean, shit. Garrett Wilson had every, like, we blew his legs out, and everybody thought he was going to run a 4-5, 40. Yeah, right. Which is still the most ridiculous thing. Um, T. Smitty, thanks for the five. Roll, motherfucking tide. Bama landed their six commit and all four stars. Fields and Bryce are poster boys for bad situation, ruining a quarterback. Amen. And it happens every year. Mm -hmm. And I told Michael Thomas this when he was, like, after the first round, when he didn't get drafted. I texted him, and I was like, listen, this is a blessing in disguise. You get drafted by the Browns, your career is cooked. Yeah. Like, you'll be, you'll be okay. Like, I'm going to say you're going to be out of the league in two years. But he got drafted by the fucking Saints early in the second. Got Drew Brees. Joe made $100 million, Like, mm -hmm. broke every record for the first four years. that are, every, every Set every every record. Because he went to a, the, a great fit, or a great situation. Yeah. The Michael Thomas slander, like, calling him a bust, never sits well with me. No, he's not like, a damn, bust. He made 100 M's. <laughs> he made 100 M's. Broke every record for receiving in, a, in, in, your, in his year. first four yeah. years. And then he dealt with a bunch of injuries. Like, that shit happens. Yeah. And he was a second rounder. Right. A second rounder getting to 100 M's. Crazy. Fucking nuts. Fucking nuts. But no, where you land matters. Where you land matters. Um, Connor, thanks for the 20. Just finished my lift, but I saw Justine dropping deep threes on Zach's face. <laughs> Nothing but net. Justine man, can man, really want, no, ball. No, 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 no. You like want. it, Sasha. She's a hooper. Okay. He walked in, and I was up 21 to 6. Because I ain't taking it easier on her ass. She's too athletic. And he walked in. He was like, I know she's beating your ass. And I was like, please. She, and she was. She Her shot was off. And she just, no, I mean, didn't even touch the rim. Buried a three. And I let her shoot it because she'd been missing. She did. She buried a three right when he walked in. Don't let me find out. Hey, Justine, don't spend any money on a super chat. But you could text me. Text Chris and let him know. Justine says she was, she dropped you off. The fuck out of here. She said she hit you with this snatch. She, <laughs> Step back. But I'm serious. I, I was telling Chris about it before the show. Don't discount sport cardio. Just play a sport for 20 minutes. I, I burned more calories. Or we did. She didn't have her watch on. But we burned more calories playing one-on-one -on -one against each other for 20 minutes than I burn in any other cardio we do. Start stopping. Yeah, start stopping, jumping, mm -hmm. all that. Your heart rate. My heart rate was like 160 for 20 straight minutes. Yep. Massive. We love we love playing basketball. And, and Zach, people think you don't like basketball, but it's really you don't like the NBA. I don't like the NBA. Yeah. Oh, I like the sport yeah. a lot. I love high school basketball. 
I'm gonna send you this clip, bro. James Harden passed to a team. Oh, I, yeah, and then fucking tried to block him. What was that? <laughs> what was that? This is what I'm talking about that's, with the NBA. That's my goat, bro. I'm just saying, what the fuck was he doing? It's a mockery. <laughs> he passed it to a wide open dude for three and then contested the shot of his teammate. This is the shit you guys think is cool and good. I thought that shit was cool. It would have been cooler if his if his teammate he, made the shot. Yeah, he missed. He missed the shot. He missed the shot. And everyone's just like, what is Harden doing? Ha, 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 ha. It's like the NBA is a fucking joke. He had the Kawhi Leonard under points. He probably did. So he passed it and realized, oh, shit. <laughs> Not the over. <laughs> Not the over. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Mick got sports. Thank you for the five. Chris, are you going to wear that beanie when it's 85 outside? No, nah, man. Real ones, no. I convert to baseball caps. Right. Around, around April? Yeah. We go to baseball caps, but they hate my Yankees have for some reason. DJ, thanks for the five. Coach Scruggs was in front of the judge. The judge said, you've been brought here for drinking. Scruggs replied, okay, let's get started. <laughs> That's a good joke. Yeah, some good little dad jokes. Oh, what are you looking at? I just want to just, Michael Thomas is a bust, right? Let's let's see let's see who had the best career. Or underwhelming, I guess. Maybe underwhelming, whatever you want to say. All right, here's the draft order of the receivers that year. Corey Coleman. Flat out bust. Will Fuller. Not a bust, but kind of a bust. I mean, he got suspended for PEDs and was Josh Doxson. Fucking don't even remember that guy. I thought he was gonna be so fucking good. Busty bro. bust. Laquan Treadwell. Porn star bust. Sterling Shepard. He was decent. She got and then Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas made more than all of them combined. Well, let's think about this now. Then who you know who the next receiver drafted was? Who? Tyler Boyd. Okay. Oh, so, so this is why two. I hate the fucking NFL draft. Those two were by far the best receivers in this draft. Then Braxton, Leontay Carew. Now we're in the fourth round. I bet these all suck, probably. Chris Moore, yeah. Malcolm Mitchell, Ricardo Lewis. Yeah, we're out. Now we're out. So there's two receivers that were good in that draft class. You can't call them a bust. Tyler Boyd, Michael Thomas. Yeah, Will Fuller never had a single year where he had over 800 yards receiving, which is insane. Yeah. Um, I think Corey Coleman was in the league for what four or five years. It's fucking awful. He was he was really bad. He should I mean he should have stuck around for a while. He's with the Browns. Yeah, Corey Coleman only played 16, 17, and 18. Right. And he and he had under set he had under 800 yards for his entire career. Right. Goodness gracious. The Josh Doxon kid I thought was going to be the best, though. I thought he was going to be better than uh than Mike. Not a, the infamous drop on uh, the last play of the Browns over the 16 season. Oh, he's a fucking, he was great. Just a great player. Shout out to the Browns. Really good at drafting fucking bad players. Yeah, the, the Josh kid. He went to TCU. He was TCU. Oh, yeah, I know. I know. I, I watched his film. When he got drafted over Mike, I went to our video guy and said, hey, give me some TCU film. I want to see why this guy is better than Mike. I watched one game, and I was like, get the fuck out of here. What are these people watching? Do you ever do, like, I, I know that was Mike's year, but did you ever talk to any of those scouts afterwards? Because did anybody reach out to you? Because, like, oh, I, no, no. I, I, I would love to know, like, for you, like, like, why did y'all think that? No, I got Jeff pet, I got petulant as a motherfucker after that. Oh, when they would come in, if, if it was the same scouts, they'd be like, "Tell me about this kid." I'm like, "What the fuck am I going to tell you about him for?" Like, y'all don't know what you're talking about, and I'm going to tell you the truth, and then you're going to go draft some fucking dickhead from TCU who can't even run a fucking comeback. Like, <laughs> I, I'll be a dick. I, I would because they're all fucking clowns. They're just there to eat donuts and and have an NFL logo. Not all of them, but most of them. I mean, the ones that drafted Coleman ahead of. So I'm saying, oh, don't don't you. <laughs> I saw one brown scout that, that talked to me, and I think then they told the whole organization, like, don't talk to that guy. They drafted Jabril Peppers, Corey Coleman. I'm like, don't fucking talk to me. You you sent him away at a Yeah, product? I was like, dude, don't talk. Don't, I got nothing to tell you. Wow. Because I, I talked to him before the draft when yeah. Mike came out. And he was gassing you up a little bit. Oh, yeah. He was like, we love him. This, that, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I'm telling you, he's the best receiver in the country. Like, I, I, like he, he will be a great pro. Then they fucking draft Corey Coleman. I was like, you're dead to me. Not the team, but these scouts. Fuck off. <laughs> I, I wish I wish I would have been there for that. That's like one well, of those Because you know what it is? Scouts come in and you're a college football it's like coach. You, and you hate fake people. Well, it's And like, they think that they're like higher or they're above you. It's like, bitch, you're a regional scout for the fucking Browns. Like, don't come talk to me about receiver play. This shit pisses me off. Because the NFL, they think they're so cool. I promise you, I, there's as good or better coaches in college. 
because you actually coach and develop kids. Yeah, it's like different. Like you have to, you have to yeah. develop them. Like in the NFL, it's more about scheme and stuff like that. that it yeah, and it's about. like, oh, that kid's not any good. Cut him. Go, go, grab this kid. Mm -hmm. It's like, how about you coach him up, you fucking clown? Nope, that that does not exist. No, I mean some there's there's I mean there is some, but the coaching in the NFL's ass. Where are we at? James, thank you for the two. I hope Marv falls in the draft, needs to go to a good team. I do too for him. Because think about it. This is what, this is what Mike, I mean, he understood it a little bit. You're not going to make as much on your first contract, but fuck the first contract. The money is in the second contract. Like if I'm Marv, I'm going to like fail the drug test or something. <laughs> like, oh no, he smoked weed. Like Lormy Tunsil. Yeah, like seriously. Like give, give me a pick like, 31 to the Chiefs, <laughs> like whatever. Like him and Mahomes, oh, he's going to be a $150 million man in three years. Get a speeding ticket. Um, I'll go ahead and blow and then go get the liquor <laughs> at the back. Have you had anything to drink? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> like, fuck it. I'm going to see the cop and be like, hey, listen, man, I, I'm sorry for this. <laughs> Just something. Like, make his draft stock fall. Yeah, He'll make twice as much money in the long run. Yeah, that is a, that's a fact. It does sound like the Cardinals want to trade out of that number four spot. Mm. And that confuses me a little bit. Well, deep receiver class, they might be okay with one of the other receivers yeah. if they can't get Marv. Who we're going to talk about in a sec here because I'm, I'm almost there. James, thanks for the two. Running back coach search seems pointless. Chip and Day got it. Now you got to have that extra coach, right? Yeah, you have to. Ryan can't waste all his time meeting with running backs. He's got a job to do. Be the CEO. Yeah, all we begged is for him to be the CEO. I mean, he already did that last year. He can't. One, he's got to fix special teams, which he is right now. At least he says he is, right? And if he can't, I guess the running backs are in there. So he could do it there. But he was meeting with quarterbacks last year, and he couldn't do that. And that hurt the team. That hurt his program. And he identified it, and he's fixing it. He, he has to, obviously, have, has to have a running back coach. T. Shaw, gifted one Menace of Sports membership. That's hey, so cool. Shout that's the out. first one. Hey, that's cool. So you can gift memberships to other people. So the big thing, I, I, I'm all about the military. So if you are active or former military, I think that's where that's who you should, if you guys want to gift a membership, that's my vote. Mm -hmm. That's big. I, I mean, we are a Menace community. So I'm 100 We're called the Army for a reason. That's Not right. because I'm that badass, but we got a bunch of badasses in it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you always got to dream big. Dream big. I remember we started the uh, the Menace Army. I, remember, I was in my office back in Akron. And, th and then two weeks later, that other show, the Cover 3 Army dropped. Oh, yeah. Of course it did. <laughs> what a world. What a world. James, thanks for the two. Xavier Johnson, does he get drafted or unsigned free agent? Undrafted free agent would be my guess. Yeah. And he'll end up probably with the Browns. Like yeah. A, a, a regional place. I mean, he'll he'll, he'll get brought in. Mm -hmm. For mini camp and all that, and have a chance, but I, no one's going to draft him. I don't think. No, you can't. Not enough tape out there. Emily, thanks for the two. No more emojis in the chat. LOL. <laughs> go zips. <laughs> Emily got a full on like swinger education from these degenerates. Is that what it is? Swinger education? Yeah, unicorn is like is like a, a single girl that will have a threesome with a couple, right? Mm -hmm. And and then it went to pineapples, which I, I guess means full on swingers. And they were talking about apple pies. It was like, oh yeah, because like there's like the the if you take your neighbor a pineapple upside down cake. Well, that that's one. Right. Or if you if you put an upside down pineapple in the grocery cart, that's supposed to be a sign. Oh. And, and then all kinds of shit. But then I learned from the degenerates that if you put flamingos in your yard, that also means that. Shit. Shit. <laughs> She and there's one woman I know that's obsessed with flamingos. I'm just saying. Shelly? No. that She just likes flamingos. Gotcha. Okay. It's swingers. okay to like. That's what I mean. Like, what if I just like pineapples or unicorns or flamingos? Yeah. We know why SpongeBob had all, all, all those holes in him, right? He was <laughs> he was the ultimate swinger. Because he, lived he was taking it. Who lives in a pineapple under the sea. SpongeBob swinger. <laughs> <laughs> uh speed wrong with <laughs> menace speed today's off the rails bro i you know full transparency i'm just a little nervous today my little brother is sparring for the first time today and it's been on my mind i just don't want to get punched on too bad you know because then my mom won't let me take him back if he comes back with a black eye right <laughs> Ooh -wee. speed thanks for the five chris you gotta keep saying you're a steelers fan it's freaking my wife out she says she's gonna stop watching you but i hope justin fields balls out and says f you to the bears yeah, I do too. I mean, I hope that for Justin. Just not two games a year where I don't want him to ball out. Yeah. Just two. That's fine. They're, I mean, they're the, the plan for them is to go 16 and two. I saw the script. Oh. So, or wait, 15 and two. Bad at math. 
Uh, Jeremiah, <laughs> thanks for the two. Love the shirt, Zach. Show it off, and then we'll get to commercial break. Damn, I love firearms. And I do. I really do. Yeah. We'll be right back after this. All right, Menace Army. The Super Bowl's over. Football season is in the past. And now it's on to basketball season. And if you haven't done it yet, you got to go check out Prize Picks. It's daily fantasy sports. If you don't, I love fantasy sports. I love putting a little money on it. There's the perfect tool, the best in the country, in the world, is Prize Picks. Basketball season's here. It's time to be pick pick a couple players and pick a couple of their stats, maybe rebounds, three pointers, points, assists, whatever you want, and and just project more or less. And when you do it, you put them all together, you can win up to twenty five times your money. Massive payouts at Prize Picks. And my favorite part about Prize Picks is an injury can't screw you. If you put some money on Kevin Durant. And in the first half, he breaks his shoelace and doesn't play in the second half. Your whole pick gets rebooted. You don't lose. It's a beautiful thing. It's the only daily fantasy sports out there that does this. If your player gets hurt, you can't lose. You can win up to 25 times your money. All you got to do is go to prizepicks.com forward slash menace. Use code menace to get a first deposit match up to $100. That's free money, Menace Army. And you know what I say? Don't ever turn down free money. Go check it out at Prize Picks now. We're back. <laughs> we are we are back at it. Um, Zach, you know, draft silly season and a, a prospect that I'm higher and higher on every single day is starting yeah. to get some buzz. A.D. Mitchell, the Texas receiver that was at Georgia for two years, um, starting to be some smoke from some pretty credible sources about him potentially rising up on draft day and being a true middle of day one pick. Yeah. What are your thoughts on A.D. Mitchell? And do you what what is the highest you would draft him? I mean, I think he's really fucking good. I thought he was really good at Georgia. I thought he was e even better at Texas. He just, to run that fast at that size with his ball skills and everything, I think he's a, gr a great player. I agree. I think he's a future number one in the NFL. I don't know if he's going to be fucking Justin Jefferson, but I think he's a future number one. Like, to be a number one, you have to be one of the best 32 in the league, right? Mm -hmm. In theory. I get it. Some teams might have two, but I think he's a future number one. So I don't know. I mean, we just went through the wide receiver draft 2016. I mean, the only two, and Tyler Boyd was never really a number one, but the only number one in that whole draft was Michael Thomas in the second round. So I, I would draft him as, you know, mid-15. I think that's – but ultimately, all these receivers they're talking about, they're not all going to be wide receiver ones. Can't. It's not going to happen. And some of them are going to get drafted at 8, at 10. I would have no problem him going at 10 or 8. I love his upside, man. I do too. And I also think – He's a little I, – I think he's more buff, bust-proof than some of the other receivers. Like, Xavier Worthy, super fast, I mean, has a real shot. But I'd worry that he would just be another fast guy that kind of gets lost mm -hmm. in, the, in the fold. With him, I, when I look at his floor, to bring up a guy you just brought up, his floor, I think, is Tyler Boyd. Yeah. It's at, at the worst. Yeah, I agree. And that is always appealing when you're drafting, especially in that 15 round. Because in that 15 round, what are you? Borderline playoffs, strung together some wins, maybe a piece here, a piece there. If I can get a long-term piece in that kind of 20, 15 to 20 realm, I love it. I am still shocked that he came in at six foot four. Yeah. And I think because a sub four four, right? Right. Four, <laughs> what the a fuck? four, four, three, eight at six four. When Nuts. you watch him play, when I watch him play at Georgia, I was like, oh, he's fast. He's twitchy. He can run every route. He's getting open. Yeah. And when you see that, you naturally think, okay, this guy must be like six one. I'm just saying the Broncos at 12. Oh, yeah. They need a receiver bad. Bad, bad. Especially now they don't have Judy. That's what I'm saying. They got rid of their guy that, I mean, he wasn't a, a true wide receiver one. I don't mm -hmm. think, I don't think anyone could argue that. But you go through this whole list. I mean, the Vikings at, at 11, opposite of Justin Jefferson, probably not a need. Or even if they want to move Jefferson. Yeah. And but, pair him up with Jordan Addison and potentially go get in a position the, with that Jefferson pick to go get a quarterback. The Saints. Yeah. The Saints just lost Michael Thomas. That's at 14. Chargers, I don't know where they're at. The Chargers are way up, fifth. Okay, yep, never mind. Did they get trade out? Yeah. I mean, the Jaguars, the Colts, I mean, those are all middle-round picks. I'm, and I'm going to say this about AD, and I don't want to predict anything, but I would not be shocked in two years if we look back and A.D. Mitchell's the best wide receiver to come out of this draft class. I can't wait to revisit this draft class because I've said that I think Malik Neighbors should be, is the best receiver in the draft class and, and I think Marv is fantastic so don't just kill me for that take 
But I can't wait to revisit this in two or three years. It's this wide receiver draft class has so much boomer bust potential. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like fucking Roma Dunes, it could be Jamar Chase, he could be Victor Cruz, or he could be Jarvis Landry. We don't know. Um, and, and then you got Marvin Harrison Jr., who could be DK Metcalf, or he could be Laquan Treadwell. Like, right. Like we don't know. So, but I'm I'm really excited for AD Mitchell, the guy that wowed people yesterday at Ohio State's Pro Day. Michael Hall. Dude is a freak. I've been telling you all year. And Chris and, and Chris didn't believe me until what, what game was it? Um it, Michigan or was it the No, no, it was it was two weeks before Michigan. Like Michael Hall Jr. was the best D lineman in that room, and it wasn't close. He is twitchy. He is he looks like a pass rushing D end in a D tackle's body. I fucking loved him all year. And I raved about him all year. I was stunned by I, his I someone sent me a thing where one of these beat writers said. They lost Michael Hall Jr., but that's not a huge loss. I'm like, what the fuck? He was one of the top three players on the whole defense. Yeah. His relative athletic score out of 10 at 300 pounds is what he weighed in at, which is bigger than than I thought he would weigh in at. 9.58. Dude is a freak. I'm just telling you. A freak. 4.78. So 4.7 four, um, in the 40. A one six nine in the in the first ten is crazy. Three hundred pounds. At three hundred pounds, thirty three inch vertical at three hundred pounds. I mean, just a nine foot three inch broad jump. Like the dude is a freak for and, a D tackle, and he's got the tape to back it up. A lot of times when you go with this D, these DTs, Zach, that kind of rise during this time of the year is, yeah. oh my god, look at the athletic testing numbers. They turn the tape on. <laughs> wow, they didn't flash, but. We can maybe figure it out. Like, we, yeah, I mean, like, how like how often do you get a guy that's three hundred pounds and can run a sub a sub five? You know, or sub four eight, a sub sub four eight. Like that, that's what that's what they say when you get these athletic freaks that don't you really know. Show it's off, one of those things that people talk about forty times. Who gives a shit for a D tackle? I just want to know his ten. He only he's never gonna have to run more than ten yards. Your DT is running forty yards. Yeah, you got your cooked. Defense has bigger issues. Yeah, you just got gassed, <laughs> gashed on something. But a one six nine ten yard split, that's that's an explosive fucking dude. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of, you know, fuck, never mind. I was going to make an Aaron Donald comparison, but I just mean in terms of like a little bit shorter defensive tackle that weighed in with shorter arms. It was really yeah, explosive. Yeah, but he's not going to be as powerful as Aaron Donald, but I, I, he's more athletic. Well, the numbers suggest that his speed to power ratio could be not quite Aaron Donald, but a, a little bit below. He's not Aaron. as strong as Aaron Donald is a fucking tank. Yeah. A I tank. mean, and even the testing will back that up. Like Michael Hall Jr. only repped 225, 24 times. Right. I think Blake Corum did more than that. Well, like, Blake Corum's also a muscled up freak. Yeah, fucking Mighty Mouse. Right. I wonder what Aaron Donald. I just remember the 10 yard split is pretty similar to Aaron Donald. Um, but no, Aaron Donald also said he's benching 500 pounds now. So. Yeah, they're, they're just different type of players. Yeah, He's a true pass rushing three technique, D tackle. Like he's a pass rusher. And he's good in the run game. Mm -hmm. Where would you, what, what's, too, what's too high to draft him? I don't know. Um, I, I, I would have no problem late first. Like right around 20, I'm good with it. Yeah, I think he'll probably go in the second round, but I would have no problem. He went at 22. I'm like, oh, that's 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 a value pick. That's that, that matches. Just the exploding testing numbers are fucking me up, bro. When you look across it and you see all the all the stuff is green on oh, the yeah. athletic score, it's like, yo, those are all the explosive numbers. And then the size being yellow and red, you kind of okay. Yeah. But all the explosive stuff being that high is something. Um, this one was for you, just so you could tell your story. But uh, Kool Aid ran a four four seven with a Jones fracture in his foot. I think we got the video of that too. So, so my man is out here cooking with a broken foot. Went four four with a broken foot. Dark. That means he's minimally he's sub four four for sure, healthy. So he's a four three something minimally. And this reminds me of Percy Harvin. Percy Harvin is the fastest football player I've ever seen. I mean, ever. No, in the SEC, in national championship games, no one. He pulled away from everyone like a lot. Mm -hmm. Fastest player I've ever seen. He went to the combine. And did the medical reviews and the physicals and all that. And they told him not to run because he had a broken bone in his foot. He said, no, fuck, I'm running. Like, I'm going to show people. He ran mid 4-4. Four four, and, and, and I didn't even know about the foot at the time. I was like, damn, how? Come to find out he had a broken bone in his foot. That motherfucker was not a 4-4. Four four. 
He's the fastest player I've ever seen. It is it is interesting because you in the offseason or last summer, you got asked the question a lot, like who's the fastest football player you've been around? And you would say Percy, and people would say, Oh, well, he ran a four four at his pro day. Yeah, You're with like, a broken oh. foot. And you and you never told that story. You would just be like, like, I don't care. I watched him run past. Well, everybody. I'm not trying to argue with it, with somebody that didn't get to watch him run. Like I watched him run in track, competing a four by one team for Florida. Yeah. I will, and and he was not a he didn't know how to get out of the blocks, still was a starter on the four by one team. Which, and I watched him play football and we had, we had speed. I mean, fast, fast guys. And nobody could run with him. Nobody. Like Joe Hayden, close, like step behind. Yeah, didn't it, wasn't Chris Rainey there too? Chris Rainey, Jeff Demps was a fucking, ran Olympia, a nine, nine oh, yeah. in the hundred. Like nobody ran like Percy. Philly said that Devin, uh, he was not faster than Devin. He was faster than Devin in the first for 10 for sure. But Devin was ridiculous from 20 to like 50, 60. I mean, it just, he had a different gear. We call that deep speed. Yeah. And I've never, I've never seen a player like that. Devin, no matter what. And Devin used to piss me off because he, he was not great at releases because he knew on a go route, I'm going to just outrun him. And that shit pissed me off so much. But he'd get 20 yards down the field, be covered like a glove because he didn't do a good job at the line. But guess what? That motherfucker won. <laughs> it, it was like covered. Especially Braxton used to throw it as far as he could. And when, and Devin, I think he didn't even fully know how fast he could run because he'd see the ball and be like, fuck, I got to go get it. And he would strain and it would just be like, like, go get it. And that is a good point. It felt like when that ball was released, maybe the separation wasn't there. But then oh, you just the catch see. he had against Michigan, I have no idea how he got to it, how he got his hands on it, and how he caught it. Like Braxton tried to throw him out of the fucking stadium. Wait, which catch against? Oh, the one it was where like he on caught his it fingertips. and then stumbled. Yes. One, two, fell into the end zone. It was like, how in the hell did he do that? I'll never forget dog watching. Uh, I think it was his freshman year, number fifth when he was number fifteen, and uh, what Miami of Ohio. That was sophomore year. Oh yeah, that was because you were there. Uh, Braxton Miller threw it way too high, came down with it. My uncle was pissed because he didn't think he caught it. My <laughs> uncle was walking around the house mad as hell, and I'm like, Unk, he. He caught it. That was crazy. He caught it. He Tom, caught it. Tom Herman said, what the fuck did that kid just do on the headset after he caught it? And yeah. I was like, I have no idea. I'm waiting for the replay. I don't know how he how that just happened. Yeah, I thought. I he thought backhand. Uh, that was wild. It was it was like it was like Odell, but under control. Yeah, like it was it was absurd. I don't I don't know how he caught that. And as soon as that happened, I was like, oh, yeah, that's Jerry Rice. Like we, <laughs> we got the greatest ever. And that's, that's when, a great example. Oh, he's a bust. Well, he had fucking like three ACLs when he got to the NFL. Mm hmm. Like, I promise Devin could have played in the NFL. He would have been, to me, at least Deshaun Jackson. Oh, yeah. No doubt. I mean, and, and he was bigger, more put together. Oh, by far. So, that's a good note. Who else has deep speed, though, like, in college football that you've seen? Um, Terry McLaurin had good deep speed. Okay. Uh, Jameson obviously had some deep yeah, speed. Yeah, Jameson Williams. I mean, I didn't coach him in college, but yes. But what he did to Ringo, and Ringo ran a sub-4-4. Four four, yeah. And watching him separate against him in that. Yeah. Jameson's like, was like that, too. Better deep speed than Devin or nah? Uh, Devin's the best I've ever seen. Okay. But I also didn't coach Jameson. I just recruited him. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Um, got some more Super Chat, Zach, and then I want to get to another break and then talk. Yeah, we got some prime recruiting tactics because I got to get your thoughts on this. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, T. Shaw, thank you for gifting another Menace member a membership. You're a legend. We appreciate it. That's that's uh, that's really real. Oh, I already read that one. Um, already read that one as well. Goodness, I'm way behind. Amputee Gamer, thanks for the other gifted membership. Also another legend, bringing Menace Army's members along with you. Uh, Cecil, thank you for gifting another membership. Y'all are real ones. Real ones. Definitely all about the community. Um, Jeremy, thanks for the five. I was wondering why all the neighborhood men come by. We have flamingos all over the yard. <laughs> Hey, I learned that one today. I didn't know that. I mean, I live in Powell, and apparently there's a bunch of swingers up there. So I'd heard about the pineapple thing, but I'd never, I've never heard of flamingos. Yeah. That was a wild one I learned in the chat today. Yeah, I'm kind of nervous for, like, the little shit I do. I got nothing in the yard, though. I got nothing in the yard. Nothing in the yard. <laughs> a couple leaves. If there's anything in my yard, my kid left it out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bust the nut go bucks thanks for the five if i say no to the breathalyzer they're gonna find a way to send me to alcatraz for driving while while brown ggs i'm telling you refuse you're gonna get arrested either way just mm -hmm. refuse that's real uh mike thanks for the five i'm bringing a special guest to the live show she want to meet the gang hint hint she runs shit and she fine as fuck with the wedding ring, bro. Remember Mike Green oh, yeah. proposed oh, yeah. to this girl? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Best behavior. Get her a hood margarita. 
<laughs> Mike, thanks for the five more. Zach, chill. Marvis Michael Thomas with more athleticism that runs a what? That runs a four three. For separate for what? Oh, he's definitely faster than Mike. Um, that's about it. Mike was far better getting open and creating separation. I mean, this is that's that's a lazy take. And I know Marvis Marvis generationally talented when he's at, at contested catches. His ball skills are excellent. His body control is insane. Like there's several things about him that are elite, elite. But to say he's more, he's exactly like Mike, but faster. No, he's not. Mike was better at getting open. Yeah, and I and I I did say earlier he could be Laquan Treadwell. I do not think Marvin's gonna be Laquan no, Treadwell. No, of let course me, not. Let me let me just keep that out in the universe. I do not think that. That was more just me talking about. He's got some variants on what what he could end up being. Um, but no, I think I think Marv's gonna be a really good player. Paul, thank you for becoming uh, a member. You're a legend, member Paul. Mike, thanks for the five more. Hey Zach, let's do some burpees in the parking lot. I'm trying to test out that workout. No, fuck that. No, I got I got mine in. I'm done for the day. <laughs> Burpees in the parking lot. If I get a workout, it's going to be a bedroom workout today. It's Thursday. Thirsty Thursday. Yes, it is. Was your hump Wednesday good? Very good. Love to hear it. Edwin, thanks for the five. Playing catch-up this week. Prayers up for speedy recovery to your pops. Also, how the hell do you subscribe? I can't find the join tab. What's it's, a tutorial? It's got to be on, on the, the computer is what I understand. But, but we're going to look into it. We're going to try to figure out if there's an easier way mm -hmm. to do it mobily. It's a great question. Sean, thanks for the five. Hot take. I'd give Burke Hancock Downs all higher NCAA football video game ratings than Emeka. Different positions, I know, but Emeka to me is like an 85. Yeah, I would have said 88, but I, I agree with that. I, agree I mean, I don't think I don't know who could argue that. That Denzel, Jordan Hancock, and Caleb Downs should be, have higher ratings than Emeka. Yeah, I agree with that. I think Emeka's ratings should probably be right there with Igbenosis. Mm -hmm. yeah that's fair too i think that's a good counterpart like both really good college players not sure if they transition to like really good nfl players yeah we'll see right this they get to develop they get to get better yeah i mean i honestly i think the only people that should be getting like 95s or higher are guys that are like first round locks yes, right yes and then second round should be like 89 <laughs> and down yeah i think i think that's, I think that's how um i would personally do it so um, you know what? I'll just ask this, or I'll talk about the uh, the scheduling right now, just real quick. The SEC, after flirting with doing a nine conference game season, they will continue with the eight game conference schedule in twenty five. Well, thank God. I don't want to miss out on the rivalry between Alabama and Austin P. <laughs> I mean, that's a great game every year. You get to watch everyone on Alabama play in the game. I mean, even like. Saban's great nephew, that's five foot four. Yeah, got in the game against Austin P. I'm bummed because like now there's really no reason for them not to go to nine games, no, right? Like the, just, the playoffs expanded. You have more teams in the SEC. You're not in fear of missing out on a two loss SEC team not making it to the playoffs. Why wouldn't you just play nine like the rest of everybody else? Well, because it's easier to get more than two losses if you play an extra SEC team. That's why they're trying to load the playoffs. This is a financial decision. They're like fuck that. We're trying to get four or five in the playoffs. But everybody is, has two losses. But is is it going to matter though? Because like when they move forward to that that fourteen game, it's going to be fifty two or fifty two percent or some shit or whatever of the revenue split anyway. Yeah, but if they get more teams in, they get more money. Okay, I I guess I just thought it was some bitch shit, and I was like, damn, I thought that they were going to go to nine games because the Big Ten, yeah, is going to and and they have an alliance. Yeah. So, like, why wouldn't they fall? Like, why can't we just be uniform with anything? I, there needs to be an actual commissioner entity that runs college football. Like, it should be demanded from the top down. You you have a league. You need to play nine games or eight games, whatever it is. But it's just that's what it is. It's no different than the Cleveland Browns have no say in who they play or when they play. None. Two of them. None. That's what it should be in college. Yeah, it's just frustrating, especially with all the new teams coming to the SEC. Yeah. And it's like, damn, if they add a school like Clemson, we'll talk about it in a little bit. It's like, damn, why, why wouldn't you go to nine games? It just it gives you it gives better product for the fans. And shit, the fans have been paying for salaries here the last couple of years. So right. we need some good games. You feel me? Right. I just paid that quarterback a million dollars. I want to see him against SEC teams, not fucking Alabama AM. and Because the school ain't paying them out of place of the school. Right. <laughs> so... That's that. But Zach, want to get quick from our partner and then talk about Prime. And Sounds and good. State. Coming back with a little Prime. Got a little Ohio State talk coming up, as we always do. We'll be right back after this. All right, Menace Army. 
as we're on this fitness journey, there's a big part of getting being the best version of you. And I found it. We got it. They sent me a bunch of meals. I've already tried it, tested it. It is menace approved. That is called Factor. Factor meals are two minute meals. Fuel up fast with their restaurant quality meals that are ready to heat and eat wherever you are. They have snacks, smoothies, all kinds of stuff. You can get anywhere from six to 18 meals a week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. It's a must try for the Menace Army, the Menace Army, as we go down this path towards the best version of us. Head to factormeals.com slash menace and use code menace50 to get 50% off. That's code menace50 at factormeals.com slash menace50 to get 50% off and start these easy meals that are nutritious and healthy and it will help you be the best version of you. Go check them out. The best version of you. That's all we're trying to make. Just we're trying to make everybody be the best version of yourself. Look, I started some shit on Twitter. Garrett Wilson responded to his, his highlights. The man who wins, you or CJ. Someone said CJ would cook Garrett Wilson, and you'd lose for sure. <laughs> Garrett, who wins it on one-on-one, bro? Garrett or CJ? I heard CJ's got a clip, but Garrett, I watched Garrett play high school basketball. That motherfucker is good. Bro, I will always pick the Twitch monster. <laughs> yeah. You know how I feel about Garrett. So I bet Garrett's DM CJ the fuck up. <laughs> But CJ does have a clip. He I've does. seen it, and I've heard that from a number of players. CJ gave that one NBA player 30 yeah, that's in what I'm high saying. school game. I think that'd be a good game, man. Honestly, fuck softball for charity. Let's see those two running for charity. Right. Run yeah. the ones. Let's run, go. Run the ones. I'm trying to I'm trying to see it. Um, here we can. Prime, Coach Sanders, has not gone on a single in-home visit since becoming Colorado's head coach, Zach. That's kind of some, that's some news. It's impressive. Yeah. They asked him why. He like, said, I really, truly, in my heart, believe parents don't want to see me at their house. They want to come see my house. I mean, if they had to pick, probably. But that's ignorant. That's absolute ignorance. Those p- families, one, would love to break bread with the future head coach that they're, is going to coach their kid in their own home. And two, how special would they feel having Dion fucking Sanders come to the house? Like, they be flexing to all the neighborhood. Yeah, like, I got Prime at the crib. Like, hey, can... sorry, guys, can't come over tonight. Prime's coming over for dinner. I'm cooking lasagna. <laughs> like, it, it's he's wrong. He's absolutely wrong. Those parents want him to do a home visit. Motherfucker's just being lazy. He's like, I don't have to do that. I'm Prime. That's what I thought, too. I initially thought he was being lazy. I, I, I Honestly, it makes it more impressive that he's been able to land a five-star every year without yeah. going on an in-home visit. It's it's crazy. Like for you, you had to go see all your kids at home, didn't you? Yeah, and and not only me. If the one kid that I recruited and was committed to us that Urban Meyer did not go to a, to the home visit was Tavon Jacobs. Was a little slot receiver out of Maryland. Started for Maryland for like four years. Was a really good player. Not an NFL guy, but we we definitely could have used him. And he was like, "Hey, do you, you think it'll be a problem if I don't go?" I'm like, "Yeah, probably." I mean, I'll try to make it work. Sure enough, he didn't go. Loxley went. Pfft, Flip. <laughs> like, well, thanks. Thanks, coach. Or he said, yeah, but again, just impressive. I mean, he landed Kermani with, with no in-home visit. The Seton kid, obviously, five-star, no in-home visit. I promise you he did an in, in-home visit to the Travis kid, though. Like, Travis Hunter, there's no way he didn't go in-home for that. No. There's literally not a chance. Um, So, Clemson has, since yesterday, with their complaint, they have also notified the ACC that they are currently looking for a new conference. It's fucking beautiful. They're not waiting for the lawsuit. No, fuck you. Uh, basically, what they're saying is we're going to try to get out of this payment, but we're going to pay it if we have to. Mm. I mean, think about it. What's what's the cost of a life? If you're on the Titanic, are you like, mm, let's just wait and see. Maybe we'll pull out of this. Maybe we'll pull through. I believe. Or are you saying, fuck it, I'll pay you. It's like the, the women and children thing, right? All these rich men are getting told no. Like, dude, I'll give you $100 million <laughs> if you let me on that fucking lifeboat. That's real. And the dude standing there is like, I'm going to be dead in a minute. Like, what the fuck do I want your money for? Yeah, 100 M's. But I guess the uh, ESPN holds their fate. So this is where it gets interesting, because I think that the ESPN could dissolve their grant of rights if they wanted to, but only, if, only. If they go to the SEC. Not just Clemson. Clemson and Florida State. Yep. I think deep down they know that Florida State is going to end up in the Big Ten. And so the big holdup is ESPN, as it should be. Because if Florida State goes to the Big Ten, you have now armed the Big Ten 
with the state of Florida, California, everything out west, and probably more quality programs. Well, this is truly like a war, right? It, it is. And you're watching the Big Ten surround the SEC. Then they're going to start going in on them. Because mm-hmm. then then what? You pick off a Go get them. Because AM's not happy with the SEC. No. And then all of a sudden, you're looking, and it's like, I'm t- you go get Georgia Tech. Now you got Atlanta. You're really surrounding the motherfuckers. Suffocate them. ESPN's holding this whole thing up. As they should, because mm-hmm. they know they're going to lose revenue if teams join the Big Ten. It's going to Fox. So they'll, they'll, it'll be one of it'll be one of those backroom deals where they say, all right, listen, we'll let you out of your grant of rights if you go to the SEC. If not, you're paying us $150 million. And Florida State is probably like, come or, or Clemson is probably like, Florida State, please, let's just go to the SEC. Right. Please, Florida State, not going for it. So quit asking. Well, if they win in court, fuck off, ESPN. We're going wherever the hell we want. And if they lose in court and I'm Fox, I'm just paying ESPN. Yeah, like, I, I, will, I will pay them to get out of the grant of rights. No, don't pay. You just pay Florida State. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just, that'd be so fucked for Clemson. Bro. I mean, you, you're, already, you're already paying, what, one point whatever billion dollars. Like, mm-hmm. what's 150 mil? Exactly. Throw it to Florida State. Add them to the thing, to the Big Ten, and move. keep it moving. With keep, birds in the air at ESPN. Keep it moving and a grooving. <laughs> shout out, shout out to the networks. Um, Demarco Murray got a three-year contract with Oklahoma and a fat ass pay raise to stay at his alma mater after flirting with Ohio State. After reportedly the uh, the contract being verbally agreed on after the Austin Ward text message that went out to everybody. Yeah, someone said that, that to me. <laughs> Austin Ward said Demarco Murray is getting the job, and then like three minutes later, he said. Scratch that. He is not getting the job. <laughs> what the fuck is going on right now? Ohio State, with this room, with their salary, with their brand, has now been told no twice I mean, by running back coaches. Well, this is how you keep your running back coach. And obviously, Ryan didn't want to keep Tony Alford because what did they do? Ohio State's going to offer him a contract. We'll just dunk on that contract. And my man got paid to stay at his alma mater. Like, good for him. That's how... <clears throat> That's what happens when there's interest in you as a position coach. Mm-hmm. You get raises and longer contracts and because they don't want to lose you because you're a really good football coach. <clears throat> so this isn't this wasn't that big a deal to me when they first said, "Oh, Ohio State's going to hire him." I said, "Only if Brent Venables doesn't want doesn't him. care." Mm-hmm. Like if he cares and he has the money, he'll just one up the salary and, and the contract and then DeMarco Murray stays at his alma mater. That's that's how it's going to work. Ryan Day's gotten two dudes paid. The Gillespie kid, uh, coach, excuse me. He got a massive pay raise, too, and the extension. They approved that. I mean, what Tony Alford did by leaving is he re- reset the running back coach market. <laughs> he really did. <clears throat> I'm curious what they're going to do next because now you cannot look your players in the face and be like, we're going to get the best in America here because your first two options both said no. Well, you didn't offer enough money. Ooh, who do they go after now? Is it going to be is Stan Drayton going to make the return home? Uh, it depends if he's if he's happy if he re- wants to be a head coach. No, they need to call my guy Matt Merritt. I'm telling you, he'll be he's just like these dudes you're talking about. He's just like Tony. He's just like Demarco Murray. He's just like Robert G- Gillespie. Like he's he's a big time coach, and you can get him on a cheap. He's at Miami. Fuck Miami. Yeah, it is wild though. A running back coach staying at Oklahoma, but I guess if if it wasn't his alma mater, I'd be like, wow, red flags a little bit there. Yeah. Cause, cause, what the fuck and why? How soon? I mean, do you? I mean, now at this point, do you think they'll even get one by the end of spring? I don't. I don't think Ryan's in any kind of rush. They clearly are doing a great job covering all the positions. Ryan's getting to coach a position. It's not in season where he has to, you know, be the CEO and and you're working twenty hours a day. Like this is spring, a little more relaxed, mm-hmm. still intense, but more relaxed when it comes to like urgency because you don't practice every day like yeah what do you practice three days a week yeah you tuesday thursday scrimmage saturday usually okay uh, I, I know think, that's what they're doing this week i think wait, i think they had monday oh yeah no, no tuesday thursday tuesday thursday saturday oh so this saturday is the first scrimmage yeah whoa oh yeah whoa and those scrimmages are the big deal right like, oh big deal way bigger than the spring game like way bigger i can't I can't reiterate it enough. I say it every year this time of year. The spring game is for fans. If you th- like the critical days are these Saturday scrimmages that are not open to the public because that's where they run their full, full offense, full defense. Like it's as it's way more competitive than the spring game. Way more. Oh, and you got a lot of guys fighting for spots, but namely quarterbacks. I can't wait for Monday show. I'm just saying, bro, how do you, how do you cut it up? Like, do you is it first team, first team? offense versus first team defense oh yeah in the spring oh fuck yeah, yeah. and so how do you divide up reps between the quarterbacks 
Well, you got to Will Howard and Devin Brown got to go with the ones the whole day. Not never with the twos. Never. This is spring. You're not trying to get them ready for a season. Yeah. You got to see them both with the same other 10 guys and see who does a better job. And then then the second group can be your Lincoln Kind Holtz Julian Sayan. And then Aaron Nolan can get some three reps at the end of the scrimmage. That gives me chills. Uh, how long are those scrimmages? How long is the first scrimmage usually? Two hours, maybe. Two hours, like full game. They got the speakers going in there too. Oh, and bro, it's it's hype. It's fucking the first scrimmage. My my favorite day of the year is the first scrimmage in in, in fall camp and spring ball. They're, they're just fucking outstanding because you're like fuck all these drills, fuck all that bullshit. Like I'm we're not doing a seven on seven. We're not doing cone drills. We're not working on releases. We're gonna go out, warm up, brr, blow that whistle, and let's play this fucking game. Oh, there's nothing better than it. Nothing. Oh, and you can really see what's going on. You really see what's going you on. You really see what's going on. Pretenders, contenders, all that. Yeah, put up or shut up. Oh, yeah. I wonder how much anxiety this quarterbacks are having, man. Because again, oh, this oh. is a this is the million dollar, tens of million dollar job right here. It really is. And you know what? Pressure can form a diamond or crush you. Yeah. And that's the beauty of the and, and they're gonna build it up now. These coaches are gonna make these players think that these scrimmages are the fucking Super Bowl because they want that pressure on them. <laughs> I hope the kicker hits the field goals. <laughs> How do they do special teams and scrimmages? Is it just like no? They'll, they'll kick field, like if you score a touchdown, they'll kick an extra point. Whatever. They'll I remember try in, the, field in the one spring game, uh, Urban kept making the kicker move back five yards. He oh, just yeah. kept kicking it, moving him back. Yeah, you just try to put pressure on him, see and see what they're capable of. Urban used to squirt kickers in the face right before they snap the ball. All kinds of shit. Why? Just to fuck with them? Because you you try to rattle them. Because what what happens with a kicker in, in in the Georgia game? Yeah, but squirting water in the face is crazy. I like when he just stands right by. No, him. that's not true. He does that too. He would stand like almost in their way where it was like uncomfortable. But he's just he was just trying to put pressure on them to see if they'd make a kick. Because you go last second field goal against Georgia to make the kick. You'd like to at least have an idea. Is this dude a rat like get rattled easy or is he a tough fucker that could in the in the big moments is gonna drain that kick? Mm-hmm. Motherfucker shanked it. <laughs> <laughs> he shanked that bitch. Fucking man. Our live event, we had a badass live watch party, Bro, and I've going... never seen people leave so fast. Bro, it's old... Probably saved me a couple grand, though. If he makes that, I think that party goes well into the night. Yeah, bro. Old boy was, was crying and throwing up <laughs> at the function. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm talking about like I'm we had, we had it on like a how big was that TV? 120 at inches? least a no, million inches. No, it was probably 300. It was like a projection, 300 yeah. inches. And I'm sitting right in front of it. And I'm like, oh, and I fell to the ground. And I look around, and everyone's, like, packing up their purses and shit. I'm like, oh, well, party's over. Dude, I couldn't even watch the kick. I was so nervous. Oh. All I heard was, no! Oh, they like, were, they were Michael Scott. I got I some. I think Justine took a video of it. It's really depressing. I, I won't show it to as you. As soon as the fucking ball drops, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was, it was like... It was the perfect moment to have a perfect moment. The ball is dropping. The snap comes back. Drain the kick. You win a natty. Mm -hmm. Tough day, man. Tough day. It was brutal. But anyway, I hope the kicker makes all the kicks in the scrimmage. (laughs) Me too. That's that's really what it boils down to. Um, Got some more Super Chat, Zach. Uh, Ooh, here we go. Buckeye, thanks for the five. How do you think Michigan season ends last year if Will Howard was at quarterback instead of J.J.? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> With a natty? Maybe. I don't know anything about Will Howard. I mean, you're going to have to throw it a little bit. Can he throw? I mean, I mean, Will Howard wins that game against Oh, Washington. Will Howard. I'm, I was thinking of Will Johnson. I was thinking of, of Michigan. Oh, 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 yeah. Will Howard. They probably win a natty with Will Howard. Yeah. For sure. They probably went with Will Johnson, too. <laughs> That's what I was like. I don't fucking know. I've never seen him throw. Oh, shit, we're about to test it this year with Alex Orshi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're going to find out this year. The originator. I can't wait for their spring game, bro. Yeah, I'm excited for that, too. Because does he go? I can't wait to go up to spring practice. Up there. Ooh, that will be fun. I w- would love to know more about that. Um, does he go live for a spring game, you think, Orgy? Nah. Uh, it depends on the competition. Bro, he's got to go live, bro. No, he doesn't. What For what? They know that motherfucker can run. You're right. Who cares? You're right. We like, saw what happened when Devin went live last year. Yeah, it just broke my heart. Like, if you need to see if he could, if he's that dynamic and he's that big of a competitor and can run the ball that effectively. Yeah. Keel, thanks for the two. My dog could have played quarterback for Michigan last year. That's fair. Probably. I mean, shit. Could you complete ten passes in an Addy? You think? Fuck yeah. Could you have thrown? Here we go. Could you have thrown for 150 yards on Washington's defense last year? I mean. How many passes am I getting? The same number as JJ? Probably not. As many as you want, bro. No, nah, I'm gonna connect on at least two D balls. I got, I got that, I got that dime. You throw 43 yards on the numbers. Psh. 
All day. I, honestly, if I get to call a play, so I'm just calling pop past the Donovan Edwards. I'll get that 100 yards. That right. counts as a four pass. There's Jeez. no doubt. I, hey, I, I know the game well enough. I'm going to find that check down. <laughs> I'm going to find it. And we know Washington wasn't trying to tackle. So. No. <laughs> and with that old line uh, now I start getting pressured, that it might be a problem. Yeah. Uh, you won't get see pressure. I don't know, but watch his D tackles look like fucking the guy that repairs your cable. <laughs> The one that does a bad job repairing the cable. Yeah, like you can see one. his you can see his asshole because his fucking pants are falling down. Not the asshole. You could have just said butt crack. Same you thing. You could have just no. It's not the same thing. You could have just said ass crack, butt crack, plumber's <laughs> crack. Yes, that all of those. But you said asshole. Anyway, it's dramatic. I get it. <laughs> Speed. Thanks for the five, Zach. Can you explain the Iron Buckeye Award? Iggy, Josh Fryer, and Sonny earned it this winter. Is it a big deal on how and how hard it is? to earn it yeah it's like having a perfect uh the perfect winter session i guess you don't ever you can never miss a workout can't get injured and you have to go as hard as you can fucking go every day you have to bring it every day yeah uh and you have to what not miss any practices i think you said that well no the, the, for the iron buckeyes for the winter okay oh yeah not missing a workout yeah not missing a workout but then in the spring they'll have another one they, they do it every quarter does it ever translate to playing time, or is it more mm. just like a Mickey thing? No, it's a Mick thing. Like, like we we put a plan together, and you fucking killed it. Yeah, that's big, Josh Fryer. Because you know, yeah. Josh Fryer, they said he's had a phenomenal whatever. I'm here for it, man. I love nothing more than to see players level up. Develop right. I agree. Wendy, thank you for becoming a member. You're a legend. We love you, Wendy. Real supporter. Real supporter. Mike, thanks for the ten. I enjoy a good challenge, Zach. Michael Thomas was second in the league behind Julio Jones with 63 contested catches. Marv first, neighbors was second. Family argue love. Contested catches. Yeah, I, I, I already said. Didn't I say Marv, I think, is like the best contested catch receiver maybe I've seen? Yeah. I'm talking about separation. Like, Mike was better at getting open. Right. I think he's saying that Michael Thomas – wasn't getting open that often because he's was second in uh, cat, uh, contested catches. But I think he had a hundred catches that year, so he had to get some form of separation, right? Yeah. I mean, fucking. He, I mean, he he went crazy that year. I don't know. We could break it down. Yeah, at, at some point, uh, Zach. This one was for you, just because I, I love receivers. I love guys in nil deals. Uh, this was last week. Jeremiah Smith got the brand new Dodge Durango, uh, three ninety two. Whatever Listen, that man, is. I'm, I know this is the the par for the course now, right? Nil guys get cars. What they get matters. Mm -hmm. You got a South Florida freakazoid coming up to Ohio State. This motherfucker got a truck. Man, where can I bet on him being the number one overall pick? Because I'm putting <laughs> a band on it. You get a truck you can block? Is that the rule? Man, it, yeah, it's not some fucking douchebag. Oh, I want a Ferrari. I want to, like, yeah. no, he said, give me a fucking truck. <laughs> Am I a douchebag if I want a sports car? No, I'm <laughs> just saying, like. I think you just said I was a douchebag if I wanted a sports car. No, I mean, he wouldn't offer a Ferrari, but it'd be like. Like a vet, like like a vet or a Durango. Yeah, I'm taking a Durango all day. Over the vet? Fuck yeah. Fried chat. No. Chat, the, the check him. Chat, check no, him. vet's got to be my third car. I'm what? Not, I'm not getting a vet. It's my daily drive. I, Give me a big-ass truck. But it's like da the daily drive shit only matters if you're actually paying for the car. You don't want to put miles on it. No. I got to give this bitch back at the end of my time. Oh, what, if, I anyway? what if I got to take people somewhere? What if I got to move something? Like, Fuck what? people. <laughs> I'm going to look up. I'm going to take I, a nigga bitch. Fuck that, bro. Man, Fuck, I dude. got kids. The fuck, you I, do. That's, we're talking about if no you're bitches. a five-star receiver at Ohio State. You man, want the Durango? Jeremiah Smith, is, Jeremiah Smith is getting his dick wet in the Durango. I promise you. Man, he ain't he, worried about nothing. The turbo. Get the vet. Am I nope. fried? You're fried. Am I fried? You're fried. Those Durangos are 90 bands? Yes. Bro, how would you feel, bro, if one of your receivers, like, if your receivers came in with, with shit like that, bro? Oh, I mean, my truck, my yeah, the truck I totaled, um, <laughs> it was like 75. Like, that was, I, I honestly had this exact conversation. I went to the dealership, and I was like, look at it. I want to get a truck. And he was like, that vet right there is 70. And I was like, looking at it like, damn. See? You for real? And what did I do? I bought the fucking truck. Yeah, because you have kids. But if you were Jeremiah Smith, you would absolutely go get the bet. Yeah, probably. Right? Maybe. I know you would, bro. Yeah. I but some about, bro. So I, I, I got, a, I got a car, and me and Zach were riding in it. It's fast. What kind fast. of car? Uh, a Toyota. Nah, he get no Toyota. A Toyota. A I would, hey, when Chris did the show with the OVE guys, he was taught. He told a story. He said, "You, you, you can't pull up with a Rolex on and a beater." He said, "You got to have a whip." And I'm in there like, you mean like a Tesla? Uh, yeah, like a brand it, yeah. new Tesla? Yeah. yeah Got yeah. that menace money, huh? 
Anyway, I just saw the look on Zach's face when I started to make this bitch go fast, bro. And I'm like, oh, yeah, he needs a turbo, bro. <laughs> he needs a turbo. You set yourself up for that one. Yeah, but I was, I, I thought you would just, like, you know, move in a groove with me and you would just, like, argue a little bit. I mean, I got a Honda Accord. Shout out to my guy, Kyle. <laughs> Thank you for the setup, Kyle. You know, Kyle's selling cars up there at Syracuse. Shut he up. is. No, he gave me a great fucking deal. Shut he up, did. Chris. He did. The new Accords, they're real sporty, man. They're aggressive. Pat, give us the commercial. We'll be right back after this. Menace Army, it's not time to stop gambling. I know that much. Football season's over, but it's still a great opportunity to bet on some basketball. I'm not a basketball fan, but I will throw some money on some props. Shout out our guy Mensa, who will give you all the prop bets you need. And as always, the best sports book out there, my bookie, has got your back. You can parlay anything in the world. I'm talking rebounds, assists, probably how what, what color Gatorade they get when they go to the bench. You can bet it all at my bookie. All you got to do is go to my bookie, use promo code Menace, and get that deposit bonus right now. Use our promo code and go lock in for basketball season. It's a time to build your bankroll because March Madness is a month away, baby. Mensa's got you with the picks. My bookie's the best sports book in the world. Go check it out now and get that free cash each. I mean, I don't know what we're doing. It's not a month away. It's today. March Madness is here. Get over to my bookie. Get that free money. Let's start building a bankroll. Bet on somebody's fucking 12 seeds. Isn't that the one, 12 and 5? No, no. Bet on the 13 seed this year. Ooh, they, ooh. They play Creighton today in 10 minutes. The Zips, the University of Akron, <laughs> the guys. That's a Creighton by, by 30. Creighton by 30. Did you see the guy that predicted the exact score of the Virginia game? No. Oh, my God. Bro. But that game was brutal. Bro. Oh, my God. Did you, Predic- did you see the athletic director of Virginia Mm-mm. liking all these tweets about how fucking awful the basketball team was? <laughs> That's so embarrassing. Oh, bro. yeah. But, you know, it she it's a woman. She... I'm sure I haven't seen it yet, but I'm sure he came. Oh, the intern that runs my social media did that, thinking he was on his personal, personal account. Some bullshit. Yeah. You know, she was just livid, like, fucking right. No, someone sent out a tweet about Virginia. Like, oh, I can't wait for them. They're in the tournament. They're about to lose by 20 to this team, and the team's going to score 74 points, and they got it all right. <laughs> someone said, run the country. Like, what the <laughs> fuck is this? Dude, they didn't score a point in 15 minutes, I read. Yeah, that shit's bad. I could score one point or two points, I like, guess. I could draw a foul. I yeah. promise I could draw a foul. And I'm going to make one of the two. Yeah, I might miss both. <laughs> got the shack for him. I'm just, man, I got, I got a, I got a d- decent little shot. Zach, we'll do some super chats and then uh, and then get him out of here, right? Sounds like a plan. Um, Shane, thanks for the two. 30 years when JJ is a Hall of Famer, Chris will still shit on him. <laughs> I will only shit on him if I never get that picture of you in Ohio State here. <laughs> and honestly... That's a great thing to say because it's it'll never happen, right? Like it's, never say like never. What's the probability of JJ McCarthy being a Hall of Famer? I mean, less than 0.1%. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, 5% probably. Nah. Yeah. I think it's 0.01%. See, you're, you're, you're shitting on him for yeah, no reason. I am. I got my pants down, Dookie State, right on JJ McCarthy's whole, whole, like, whole draft profile. Not going for it. I'm really not. Um, Speed, thanks for the two. Why don't we put as much emphasis on recruiting kickers? I mean, they do. You just don't hear about it because it's, it's not – you only recruit a kicker once every four years, right? So when you recruit a kicker, you're recruiting against like out of power five teams, maybe like four or five. It is wild because like for a random point in time there, Ohio State had the most scholarship kickers in the country on their team. Yeah. And they still couldn't make a kick to win it all. <laughs> that's bad evaluation. Yeah. And and obviously- just get somebody that's been kicking kangaroos. Those Aussie all the Aussie kids kick the fuck out of the ball. I've heard a lot a lot of people talk about like recruiting kickers to Ohio State's a little more difficult because it's cold weather. And a lot of the kickers want to play it down south places. Yeah, because it's warmer. It's warm. The ball's softer because of it. Um, and what's Stupid the ball travel? Stupid shit. But yeah, okay. Go. Then you get drafted by New England. Good luck. Yeah, I mean, we saw what with that. Remember that one Florida State kicker got drafted? Oh yeah, really, really high. Ended up not being very good, but he was so good in, in college. Sebastian Janikowski. No, no, he ended up being really good. I was like, he was really good. I don't know what you mean. Yeah, Aguayo. He ended up being a third round pick. Which was way too high and ended up not. I'm being sure the very Br- good. Browns probably drafted him. No, I don't. I don't the Browns so. have drafted more. I spent more high draft picks on kickers than anyone. Well, it was only after Phil Dawson. Like, Phil Dawson was a staple. He could have ran for mayor of Cleveland would have won. Yeah. Like, like Phil was the fucking man. Um, shout out to him. Um, James, thanks for the two. Curious what y'all drive, make, and model. I drive a 2006 Acura TSX. He's lying. What do you I drive? don't even know. It's a Toyota SUV. I don't know what it is. I don't know what year. I don't know the name of it. Yeah. Lynn, thank you for becoming a member. Legend. Hey, shout out to Lynn. Oh, OG. Around. She's OG. That's Long real. time 
consultant That's and a fan. Real, it's a real OG. Doug, thanks for the 10. Zach, talking about Lambos over Rangos, like you recruiter talking about nightlife. And JJ looking like Saiyan right now, LOL. JJ's going to be good. I hate to bring it to you. Jeremiah Smith, I know. Oh, yeah. I was talking about JJ McCarthy. but I don't think he's going to be good. I've seen this before. I don't think, here we go. I don't think JJ McCarthy is a better prospect than Zach Wilson. Stop. Whoa. Stop. What do you mean? You think he's a better prospect than Zach Wilson? I do. What does he do better than Zach? Everything that matters the intangibles, the leadership, the charisma, the energy. It's totally different off the field. On the field, maybe similar. That's at best 50% of the, maybe 60%, 60 of, the, of the formula. You'll see. I hope not. I hope I don't see. I, hope I just I hope he gets drafted late first and then becomes a great player. That's my hope. Well, yeah, I need so, my two hundo from Jordan, but so it ain't gonna happen. I think for him, if he goes in the top ten picks, massive, massive bust. I think he needs to go to a good team mm -hmm. and wait a while before stepping foot on that football field. Yeah, maybe. Like he needs to go play. Who Who's the current day Alex Smith? Go play. Go be his backup. Yeah, go be whoever that guy is. I mean, honestly, fuck. Backing up Daniel Jones for three years would be a good play for him. They're not three years. Well, I I don't want to see him anytime soon. I need like time to fully transition over to the Steelers. <laughs> this was good from Kirby Smart, and I wanted your thoughts on it. Talking about the NFL over NIL. There's a lot of them that want to ask about the NIL. They don't want to ask about what your NFL players have done. I think it's much more important how you can develop players than how much NIL you can give them. Is this hypocritical by Kirby Smart, or do you think he's on to something? No, I, I think it's I think it's real. And it's the same reason why a kid would come to Ohio State over going to, like, from South Florida. Why would he come to Ohio State over a school that's closer, that can offer everything else Ohio State can offer on paper? Well, Jeremiah Smith came to Ohio State for one reason. Because he wanted to play for Brian Hartline and get developed like Marv did, right? That, that's, that's why he did it. Mm -hmm. Same reason where if you really look at the money and you have any type of intelligence, and you look at what George is doing in development, it's like, yeah, you could make two, three million dollars if you go to this other school. But if we maximize you, you're going to get 20. I hear you and I agree. I also think, though, when you're recruiting against schools traditionally, like Bama and Ohio State, all three of them are putting guys in the NFL. So I think the NIL thing is important to talk about. If those, because let's face it. Well, George is also paying players. And that's like, the other part of it. Like, like they aren't. Like, like George also has probably the best run NIL collective in the country. One of the top four, at least. Yeah. And so for Kirby to be like, oh, it's about NFL, not NIL. It's like, brother, you're competing against Bama and Ohio State. Two places that put guys in the NFL. Like, yes, NIL is is going to be one of the things that, that's a deciding factor. Now, if it's Miami versus Georgia, I get him. I agree. I understand. Yeah, but, but I, I thought I thought it was a little. I agree with that. But, but I, my conversation, what I would have, the conversation I would have, is if you come here and work hard and develop and become a great player, we do massive nil L, nil deals with our great players. And what we do is we don't pay recruits a shitload of money because some of them end up being busts and we waste that money. We save that money. For when you become a great player and you make twice as much. That's how I would sell it. Yeah. I mean, honestly, the way the way you do it, I mean, one of the schools has to get what does, does Bama have like the money counter? Like money earned. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like by NFL players. Like that's how I would do it. Yeah. Like look so, at like, that. <laughs> like, and I would have that right outside of my office if I was Kirby, and I would have a glass wall to be like, oh, NIL? How about that? Yeah. Is that dollar amount? Then you have an empty, empty jersey frame on that wall. Mm -hmm. Say, guess who's gonna go here, buddy? Could be you. Could you be come you. here and work hard. I think you'd be a great NIL day recruiter, bro. I'd, I'd have figured it out, but I'm glad I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> Last two, then let's get out of here. Justice, thanks for the two. My membership showing up, or is it is my shit messed up? No, I can see it. You're a member. Member Justice, thank you for the two, and thank you for your membership. Yeah, we appreciate you. That's a real one. Um, NJ, Phil, thanks for the two. Chris, were you an initial D kid? What the fuck does that mean? I don't know. Um, Obviously not. <laughs> my, last, my, my last name is Drew. KD. Uh, I don't uh, know. What's an initial D kid? Ah, whatever. Zach, get us out of here. I don't know what that means, but I don't think he was because he doesn't know, even know what it means. Yeah, no clue. <laughs> well, hey, we'll see you tomorrow. A little Freaky Friday. Menace of Sports. Subscribe, like, join, become a member of the Army. Come we up. appreciate you. Menace out.